Hey, and welcome back to the Grow Ortho podcast brought to you by HIP. This episode is going to be a unique one. I'm your host, Luke Enfinger, and as you know, here at HIP, our focus extends beyond just the business of orthodontics and dentistry. It encompasses personal growth, productivity, health, and particularly mindset. Now, today's episode's a little different. I'm inviting you into a private space, into a corner of my life, to share something that has significantly transformed the way I live and work. I call it the morning formula. Many great minds, people who've achieved extraordinary feats have talked about the power of the mind. Mike Tyson, probably the greatest fighter of all time, Earl Nightingale, known as the Dean of Personal Development, Napoleon Hill, the author of the classic Think and Grow Rich, Kobe Bryant, obviously we know he's the renowned basketball star. Uh, They all swore by the power of visualizations and affirmations. They believed that the right mindset could be a game changer. In the same vein, several authors have attempted to put together frameworks for creating a powerful mindset. Donald Miller in his book, Hero on a Mission, and David Cook in his book, Greatness, have also proposed their own versions of a morning formula. Essentially, Donald Miller suggests that you write a eulogy, then he has worksheets that kind of work backwards from that for the year, for the month, for the week, and for the day. And then David Cook, in Greatness, he explains how to write your own personal greatness letter and then read it every single morning. Now, my morning formula is a take on these concepts. It simplifies the process of affirmations, visualizations, goals, rules, financial targets, and more making it easy for anyone to create the life they're meant for. This routine has not just enhanced my personal life, but it's also transformed how I interact with my team, peers, clients, and family. And it continues to help expand me at a record speed. As I look back to 2019 compared to today, it's kind of mind blowing. So in this episode, I will share a recording from a recent team training session in which I explain my morning formula. This was originally meant for internal use only, but I really believe it can help you. By sharing this, I hope to provide a glimpse into my daily process and maybe even aspire you to adopt a similar process in your life. Because in the end, growth doesn't just happen in your clinic. It's available in every aspect of your life. So let's dive into the training session and explore the power of the morning formula. Also, if you'd like even more information after this episode, visit hip.agency forward slash morning formula. It's a process that's worked for me and and really was kind of an aha moment in 2019 was what's called the morning formula. So what is it? A lot of times when I say I do a morning formula, people think it's like a routine. A morning form, and it is to some degree, but it's not like working out, cold plunges, things like that. So a morning formula isn't about working out, eating healthy, or other activities you may want to incorporate into your morning or day. But while you should do those things, a morning formula reminds you of who you are, what you want, where you're going, your principles, your affirmations. I incorporate prayer if you're religious or spiritual, and financial targets, which I think financial targets are big for especially a business owner to keep driving you but it could be a version of that as well. So I believe most, if not all great people have a sense of personal destiny. You may laugh at who's on my list because I'm like putting George Washington on a list with Kobe Bryant. (laughs) But these are all people that I've personally studied and learned a lot from. So Kobe Bryant, Tom Brady, Elon Musk, Grant Cardone, Mike Tyson, McGregor, George Washington, Winston Churchill. These are all significant people who first won the battle in their mind I was uh, reading a book about George Washington. I have no idea if this is true, but apparently he would get off his horse in battle in the middle of gunfire and people would witness afterwards bullet holes in his coat and hat. And like, you're this, what are you doing? Like you're the lead guy. You should be like hiding somewhere. And he's like, I can't die. I haven't fulfilled my destiny and my purpose until I do. I'm not going to die. Well, we all know as history writes, he's like the most significant person in our country's history, after he fulfilled his purpose, he literally rode his horse in the rain at his house, got pneumonia and died. 
So bullets couldn't kill him and in battle, but he literally died from raindrops or, you know, <laughs> it's pretty insane, right? So all those people and way more, they all believe they would hit their goal, their target or their purpose far before it ever seemed possible. How did they do that? Mike Tyson said before he stepped in his in the ring, he won every single fight six months prior. How, how do you how do you do that? So they have a strong sense of personal destiny and most likely they're mentally obsessed. I don't think it's always bad to be obsessed. Grant Cardone, if you know who he is, he has a book, Be Obsessed or Be Average. But I think there's something to that. And obviously, I'm not saying this is the only way. This is just a way that's worked for me and a lot of other people who, who do have goals, who do want to drive towards targets. So while those names may not have had a process for greatness, the morning formula creates a, a structure to be the best version of yourself. So people, once I started learning this and then watching or reading other things, I'm like, oh, it's the same thing, right? So all of these people, they talk about affirmations, they talk about meditation, prayer, speaking positive words over yourself, Earl Nightingale, Napoleon Hill, Dale Carnegie, Tony Robbins, Emil Kue, Mike Tyson, he actually has a course called 12 Rounds. We have access to it. I'll drop it in Slack. It's really cool to hear his story and hear how like, yeah, he was a physical animal, but he would have just wound up in prison or in jail. It's because of mindset that he was able to harness that and control that and be one of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. Donald Miller, me and Matt and Harrison, I think you've read the book, uh, Hero on a Mission. His process is to create a eulogy. So start with the end in mind, write a eulogy, read it every single morning. And then he actually gives you worksheets for like the year quarter, month, week, and day. So he breaks it down. If you like planners and stuff like that, maybe look into um, that book and his process. Obviously, I learned this from Taylor Welch, who, if you don't know him, follow him on Instagram. He has some really great content and used to run a company, Traffic and Funnels, which me and Justin went to a lot of their events. David Cook, I just finished this book, Greatness. He's actually a, a mindset coach for golfers, Harrison, this mm -hmm. guy. And the last chapter in the book, he, he has this process of writing a personal greatness letter and reading it every single morning. Well, what's that sound like? It sounds like the morning formula. So there's all these different ways. I'm just going to tell you what, what works for me and I'll break it down, I think, on the next slide. So as I look back over my first morning formula, I realized I tripled my income. My company's hit or exceeded targets or goals I made. Um, I was able to purchase material possessions. It's kind of interesting too, because a lot of my morning formulas in the beginning are like, I want this or this. And then I'm like, hey, that, like, that doesn't really define who I am. And so I can see my morning formulas changing and becoming way more principle centered. And so I understood way more important than the things, the targets, the money. I understood my mission and identity. And I reminded myself of it every single day. And I think that's that's the key to all of this. So here are the steps, and I'll share this with you guys in Slack. I created a Canva. You can use Google Slides, PowerPoint, whatever. You could use a Google Doc. I write a credo and mission, basically a, a mission for my personal life. I create a vision board of my identity, so body, house, family, et cetera. I list out my principles. You could list out rules for yourself. Like Nick, you were talking about you know, doing 5 a.m. workouts and you had to put your alarm in the next room. And so maybe you have rules like that to keep yourself in check and on pace, listing out principles, listing out affirmations and list out financial targets. After you create, create it, it's simple. You just read it every single morning. I took a little bit of a different approach because I'm like, got sick of like scrolling through 20 pages and reading it. So, and, and it's kind of interesting too, because some of mine have been really long and others have been like really short. So now I created a, a video and I'm like reading. So I created a Loom video and I'm just reading over the PowerPoint slides. I dropped it in Premiere, put some cool music underneath it. Of course you did. I have a zap <laughs> that sends it to me every single day at midnight or 5 a.m. And it's at the top of my inbox every single day. So when I get in the car to come to work out at 6 a.m., I'm listening to my morning formula. It's kind of funny because on the weekends, I'll listen to it with my daughter and she's like, I want a morning formula. But then she has to be different. So she wants a night formula. So we made her a night formula 
And we listen to it every night before she goes to bed. And it's really, really simple. Obviously, she's five years old. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. If this kind of speaks to you guys, or it's something that you want to install into your life and your morning, I'd love to talk to you guys on a personal level about it. Um, we could find some time this week or schedule a call. Um, I'll show you mine and show you how they've changed over the years. If you want to get thoughts or, you know, hey, how do I do this? Or what do you think about this? I would say just keep it simple. Don't overthink it. What's the what's the quote, Harrison, you always say about perfection? It's the enemy of execution, something like uh, that. Details are the enemy of execution. Boom, there you go. Don't overthink it, go for it. And, and what you'll notice too is by doing it every single morning, you'll naturally want to optimize it. So you're like, oh, that's not right. It needs to be more like this. So you change it on the fly too. Yeah, and it's not like this magic wand, obviously. It's not like... You know, we all know people like Tiger Woods have massive character flaws and have gone through. But, you know, when it comes when it comes to his thing and what his goal was, he's the master at it. And so I think, you know, again, for me, mine became way more principle centered, way more around my family, quality time balance. But, you know, it's individual. And that's the cool thing about it. Whatever is important to you isn't going to be necessarily important to me. And so. It just drives you to that target. And like I said, reminding yourself every single day, this is who I am. I'm not bound by this because this is who I want to be. And here's how I'm going to get there. And then like you talked about putting in the work, the grind is something that has helped me tremendously. And I, I will say you can think at it, like I said, keep it simple because you can think at a deep level and go, oh, this is insane. Or these people are psychopaths or this is super. Sometimes I'll listen to mine. I'm like, this is just goofy, <laughs> you know, but I think it's more of a law. You know, if you listen to those people on that list, Earl Nightingale, Napoleon Hill, positive thinking. Uh, you may go through a, a deep, dark journey, but on the other side, if you keep going and keep the target, I think it's a law that you're going to eventually hit it, you know, because it's all about doing the, the things. How does Warren Buffett go from basically zero to billionaire to giving away his wealth three times over? You know, I mean, how does Grant Cardone go from drug addict to having four billion in real estate? There, there's a process to doing that. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about HIP or any of the topics in this episode, send an email to hello at hipcreativeinc.com. That's hello at hipcreativeinc.com or jump over to our website at hip.agency.